500 million years ago, Uluru and Katajuta were a part of the gigantic mountain range that existed in Australia that, at its height, was as tall as the Himalayan mountains and was called the Peterman Ranges. I covered this mountain in my last video where I explain how it was formed and what led to its disappearance from the land. The link to that video will be down below in the description. To understand the next part of this story, we first need to go back 900 million years ago to cover the formation of the Amadeus Basin, in which Uluru and Katajuta lie in present day. The Amadeus Basin was a shallow sea, which comprised of the sediments required to eventually merge and form the two monoliths. Some of the Amadeus Basin was, at several points in time, blocked off from this shallow sea, and the water that it held eventually evaporated, leaving crusted salt behind. A cold period on Earth that followed left deposits of glacial rock. The older sediments in the Amadeus Basin were crumpled and buckled as a result of tectonic collision, when the gigantic Peterman mountain range formed 550 million years ago. At this point in time, bacteria and algae were the only life forms that existed on dry land, and they helped to break down the jagged mountain ranges, along with other erosive elements. 500 million years ago, shallow seas once again covered the region, and the Peterman mountain range had already succumbed to devastating erosion as a result of there being no plants alive on land to stabilise the soil. The alluvial fans created from the moving of eroded debris from the mountain had piled up all around the former site of the Peterman Ranges. The sand that became the Arco sandstone, whose destiny was to eventually, in time, become Uluru, was increasingly and steadily dumped at the bottom of the mountain range as the mountain was eroded more and more. Katajuta, on the other hand, wasn't constructed from Arco sandstone, it was instead formed from cemented conglomerates of differing river-worn rocks, ranging from basalt, porphyry, granite, gneiss, and volcanic rock, among other minerals. All of this was worn down over time and accumulated in an alluvial fan, and eventually this would become Katajuta. The sediments that made up Katajuta were moved by a drainage channel that was carved into the Peterman Ranges over time by rain, and was deposited as an alluvial fan a little further away from where the Arco sandstone that made Uluru lay. When Australia turned into an inland sea, and a phase of deposition began within the Amadeus Basin, limestone, mud, and sand were deposited burying the Arco sandstone that would become Uluru and the rocks that would become Katajuta underneath the seas. Around 400 million years ago, the sands and gravels of Uluru and Katajuta were located so far beneath the surface of the earth that they had an enormous amount of overlying pressure above them. As a result of this, the Arco sandstone that once existed as particles of eroded sand became forcibly gelled into a cemented state. Under such intense pressure, the rocks were hardened to the point of literally being welded together. It was during this time that an event known as the Alice Springs Orogeny began to take place. This is very important because it, like the Peterman Orogeny, was another major mountain building episode in Central Australia, responsible for the formation of a series of large mountain ranges, though none would ever be as large as the Peterman Ranges were. This orogeny raised the region above sea level, and horizontal layers of the Uluru Arcos were folded and turned nearly 90 degrees during the orogeny to their present position, giving it the very rare look it has today. Along with the folding and tilting, they were raised from their once deep position within the earth, alongside the mountain building orogeny that was taking place, raising them close to the surface, where erosion would eventually reveal them, leaving it visible in its present day spot. The Katajuta conglomerates were tilted only about 15 to 20 degrees from the horizontal plane, and the period of uplift worked to recede the shallow sea in the Amadeus Basin, as it was slowly pushed higher with each passing year. When the sea finally receded within the next 100 million years, and eventually dried up, the two monumental structures finally surfaced once more upon the surface of the Earth, 
after a long phase of erosion that lasted hundreds of millions of years. The shape Uluru and Karajuta has, in modern days, eventually emerged from the softer rocks, and they are among the last few legacies remaining from the once glorious Peterman mountain range, that at one point in time reached as high as the Himalayas. Uluru and Karajuta are the visible tips of huge rock slabs that extend far beneath the ground. It is possible that they extend as far as 6 kilometers deep, which serves as a reminder to why they formed in the first place, as at that depth, such a large amount of pressure was generated with the weight of the seawater that once existed above them. After this, history remains relatively silent. Climates change time and time again, and two rocks went from being a part of swamps, lush plants, and a wet climate 65 million years ago, to finally, around 500,000 years ago, becoming the dry, arid place we know today. A final fact I'd like to mention is the red colour of Uluru is due to the oxidation or the rusting of the iron-bearing minerals within the rock, as it has sat there in the desert air for hundreds of thousands of years. If you were to, however, scratch beneath the surface, the rock would be the typical silver colour that unoxidized iron exists as prior to succumbing to rust. When looking at the two geological formations, it is visually obvious that they are composed of different rock types. Uluru of Arcos and Katajuta of gravel consisting of pebbles, conglomerates and boulders cemented by sand and mud into what is known amongst geologists as a conglomerate. And so, this is the story of two amazing and significant natural landmarks existing within the harsh deserts of Australia that once existed within the great and mighty Peterman mountain range that stretched for over 9,000 metres in height and which, over time, would be cut down into bulbous 800 to 1,000 metre tall stunning rocks. These rocks are very slowly eroding in present day, so take some time out of your life one day to go and visit them, as someday the life forms of the future will not be able to, when it finally joins the Peterman ranges in the dust of history.